Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at this motion sensor bulb from Firefly. They sent this to me as a Christmas gift and I've been testing it out for a couple weeks now. Now as the name suggests, motion sensor, this bulb turns on automatically when someone walks nearby. That makes it perfect as a security light, but it can also be used in other scenarios. For instance, you might put this in your bathroom, so when you go in there at night, it turns on automatically, or you might put it inside a business premises, so that instead of running the lights 24-7, they only turn on when they're needed and when someone comes nearby. Now some of you would have already noticed there's no PIR sensor because traditionally these motion sensing bulbs have a sensor like this or for instance if you have a floodlight you would have a similar PIR sensor. Well this bulb from Firefly doesn't include a PIR sensor, it's using a newer technology. It sends out radio waves and depending on how they bounce back or how they get interfered with it can detect motion so it's much more sensitive than this older style of PIR sensor. Now what that does mean is it's a lot more sensitive. Some people will like it, some people won't like it. Anyway, let's screw it in and show you how it works. So now I've screwed the bulb into this watt meter. That allows us to measure how much power it's consuming even when it's not emitting light. The reason why it's consuming a little bit of power is that it's constantly checking for motion. So that's why we're seeing that it's consuming around 0.32 watts. That's a very small amount. This is a 10 watt bulb. So when it's turned on, we should see somewhere around 10 watts. Now you might be thinking, well, your hand is moving. Why is the bulb not turning on? Well, we've got bright lights here. This lamp won't turn on if it thinks it's daylight because it would just be wasting electricity so it will only turn on when it gets dark. So to make the bulb think it's night time I put some wood around it. Now if you see my hand on the right of the screen watch what happens when I move it even just a little bit. See that? It triggered the bulb. Now if you're not impressed you should be because that movement was behind thick wood. I didn't move behind the camera or here in front where it can see me. I specifically moved over here and only over here, a small hand movement, and it triggered the bulb because it can see through wood. It doesn't need to see you like this older style bulb where the PIR sensor has to actually be able to see you. This one sends out radio frequencies and depending on how it bounces back, it can detect the movement. So it's very sensitive. Now, some people might not like that because if you've got very thin wooden walls in your home and you had this in your bathroom you could end up triggering this like from a different room because it is very sensitive but for those who want to use it as a security light outside or in their driveway or something like that it's perfect because it's so sensitive it's going to get triggered easily and you might think well that's going to waste electricity well not really because it's only 10 watts and when it turns on it's only going to stay on for 40 seconds although every time it senses a new movement it resets that timer so let's say it's been on for 39 seconds but then somebody moves again it's going to reset and add another 40 seconds to the timer so it could potentially stay on if it keeps sensing movements and again just to demonstrate how sensitive it is i'll move my hand and there you go, it triggered. Now I want to put the other bulb in there to show you it as a comparison. And I'll just wave my hand over the top to demonstrate it's working. There you go. Now this is a much dimmer bulb, it's only around 2.8 watts, but you can see it is working as intended. And now let's try the same test that we tried with the Firefly bulb. And I'm doing much bigger movements and you can see it's not triggering because that PIR sensor needs to be able to see me. So these movements here are not going to trigger it. Probably even if I do it here, it's not going to trigger it. Okay, it did just about when I got up here, but it's definitely not as sensitive because this PIR sensor does need to be able to see you. Now, of course, if you are planning to use this light bulb outside, for example, as a security light, you'll want to get a waterproof fixture like this. They're very cheap and you can just wire them into your existing electrical system. Now, before I open the light bulb and show you inside, I'll just give you a quick overview of the specs. 10 watts, they suggest it will last up to 15 years or 25,000 hours and that it outputs 800 lumens with a 240 degree beam angle for detecting movement. Now I've opened a firefly bulb before and I know there's a lot of sealant so this time I'm going to try and use a heat gun to loosen up that sealant and remove the cover here. So the plastic is a bit more pliable than the last time I did this but it's definitely still going to do a little bit of damage taking this off. I can already see a couple of cracks that I put in the case. So it took a while but I managed to get into it although it has done a lot of damage. I 
don't know if I can really still use this one anymore. But let's take a look inside. So the first thing you'll notice is the standard LEDs. And we can actually disconnect that from the power supply board below. That just pops off. It's connected via these two pins here. Hopefully you can see that okay. And it just slots in there. So very easy to disconnect. And of course this PCB has a metal backing which then joins onto the heatsink that's built into the bulb itself. So if we slide out this whole board that's now everything out of the bulb and you can see the aluminium heatsink inside which tries to dissipate the heat from the LEDs. Now if we look at the main board, this is our power supply, this is where our AC comes in and this is all our power supply components. Now I'm not going to go through every component but I will bring it close to the camera for anyone who's interested. And on request I could probably take some higher resolution photos if anyone's interested. So that's just our normal power supply stuff, nothing really unusual there for an LED bulb. Where things get interesting are these two white PCBs. Now this one here must be our light sensor because remember this only turns on if it's dark. So this here I believe is what they're using to sense whether it's day or night. And if you look at the board here you can see this kind of snake shape and I believe that's the antenna. Now I'm not sure if they're vias or exactly what they are but I do believe that's the antenna. And you can also see it on the underside of the board if you get the lighting just right. Because like I said this works by sending out radio frequencies and depending on how they are disturbed it can detect the movement. So I believe that is the antenna. Now we do have a chip under here, but it doesn't have any markings on it at all. It hasn't been rubbed off, it was just never printed on there. So I assume they don't want anyone to know what that chip is. But that is a neat little unit. Now one thing I'm wondering is if we short out this sensor here, can we get the bulb to trigger even when it's bright? And that's what I'm going to try now. So to test that idea, I'm going to put a little bit of solder between the contacts of this sensor. Well, not so much a little bit, but quite a lot. Anyway, we've now got a short circuit on that sensor. Now, it wouldn't be very easy to get that back into the housing, so I've connected it directly to the watt meter. So let's turn it on. And you can see it is working because it's drawing 0 0.31 watts. Let's see if we can trigger it with some movement. Nope, it doesn't seem to be working, so I guess short circuiting that light sensor has stopped it from working. Let me take this apart and then remove the solder. And there we go, no longer short circuited. So of course it still doesn't trigger because it thinks it's daylight, but if we cover that light sensor, you can see it then triggers. And I'll wait for that to turn off, and now if I move my hand it should trigger again. There you go. So it really is more like a radar style of movement detection instead of the passive infrared that we're used to seeing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is an interesting upgrade to the older style of PIR sensor bulbs. Now not everyone will like this new style because they are very sensitive. They can be triggered by cats, dogs, mice, bats. They can even be triggered through the wall if your wall is thin enough, like if it's made of wood. So it won't be for everyone's taste, but when it comes to security lighting, it's really ideal because you'd much rather have it being too sensitive instead of not sensitive enough. Because worst case scenario, it turns on and it wastes a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of electricity compared to, say, this light bulb, where if someone knows exactly where to stand, they could avoid triggering it and then it wouldn't turn on at all. So yeah, it's a very interesting new style of motion sensor light bulb. And it's ideal because you can just remove your old bulb and screw this one in. You don't have to, you know, install extra sensors or do new electrical wiring. It's pretty cool. So if you did enjoy this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.